Hello everybody, my name is Zombie878, and we are back with another tutorial. This tutorial, we're going to be making a CV2 clock. We're going to be doing seconds, minutes, and hours. What we're going to do is we are going to actually copy this text gadget over here get it pretty far away from that so we don't see that what we need is a string format once we have a string format we get a two string we need a float variable Add under the float variable the event receiver. Move that out of the way of the float variable. We can use a floor to int, but we don't need one. But I do recommend you do use a floor to int. We're going to be getting an uh, equals chip, a greater or no, well, not greater or equal. We're going to get a greater than chip. We're going to get an if chip. And we are... That's all we're going to get. First things first, we are going to copy our float variable up. We're going to make sure that the text is unsynced so everyone in the room can see their own text. Okay, now that we have all of that prepared, we're going to connect our string format to the text input on the text chip. And we're going to make the format into open squiggly brackets zero close squiggly brackets and we're going to do seconds so now whenever you let's move this down a little bit so it doesn't knock into the other chip we're going to connect that to the two string and we're going to connect the two string to the floor to end. This way, when we have our float variable in the floor to end chip, it changes, it converts the float to an int, which the float is decimal form and the int is not decimal form, it's whole numbers. So, if you just want the float variable and the decimals, you can combine that to the two string. But, like I said, it's probably better that you have a whole number that you can work with. It makes your life a whole lot easier in the end. We're going to make the event receiver update 30 hertz a second. And we are going to not combine that just yet just moving everything over so it doesn't hit everything so what we're going to do is connect the float variable to the add chip and basically every time this goes up we're going to have our float variable set the seconds it goes up. We're also going to connect the add, the zero at the bottom, to the delta. This time, every time it ticks, it will give one. So if we do this right now, this will go up by one second. And since this is the int variable, it's going to be a whole number. If it was a decimal, it will be like this, which I don't know if you want that. But if you do, you don't need the floor to int. 
So now that we have the easy part out the way, we are going to make it so it um goes up one minute every 59 seconds. So we're going to take the floor to end and um we're going to connect this if you're wondering how i spawned this equals chip i was going to show you if you try to connect this to equals chip and try to use the decimal form it's not going to work because the decimal does not count whole numbers so if you try to put any whole number here the decimal is not going to make your equals chip ever true so it's better to use a greater than chip because if your decimal is greater than a certain number, then this will activate. But since I'm using an int, combine the int to the greater than, and when our seconds is greater than 59, the reason I made it 59 and not 60 is because there's no 60 seconds it's only 59 then it turns over we're going to combine this here and we're actually going to wire the output of the set text to here that way every time the float variable sets the seconds it also checks if the seconds are greater than 59. Next, we're going to copy another float variable up here, and we're going to name this M for minutes. Well, since I got it uh, named M over there, I'm going to name this uh, minute. Always better to have these variables on the shorter side. And every time this activates, it will add one minute. Every time this if output activates, it's going to add one minute. And of course, after it adds a minute, we want to reset our seconds. Otherwise, this is going to keep going up every uh, tick this 30 hertz a second does and before we continue we want to set our string format to squiggly bracket zero minutes we're gonna space this out do squiggly bracket one close squiggly bracket and then seconds and it's going to show one there because we don't have enough values so let's add two values one for minutes and one for hours now we're going to have a two string And even though this is a float variable, it's not going to add a decimal because I'm only adding one every time besides this, which is adding this decimal every time. So you want to connect the output of the minutes to the two string. And we're just going to move this a little bit. Okay, and now we are going to make it so the first value is going to be our minutes and the second value is going to be our seconds. Just going to have this switch places or move them up like that. Look, that looks a lot better. And now if I, um, I'm going to make the seconds 10 seconds just so I'm not sitting here for 59 seconds waiting for it to switch over to a minute. And now, as you can see, it's counting the seconds, and then once it hits 10, this will activate. Once it's greater than 10, this will activate, and it will 
add one minute and it will keep doing that forever so now that we have that down let's add hours okay out of string variable so now we're going to do the squiggly bracket with the zero then we're gonna have hours gonna do a squiggly bracket with the one and say that minutes oh i forgot the semicolon minutes then we're going to have a two in the squiggly brackets and say this is seconds. So it should look something like this. And now we are going to, I'm going to move this down a little bit and get another two string. And we're actually going to copy this variable and we're going to name it something different because if you don't name them something different, then if you add one to the minutes, it's going to also add another one to the minute. So we're going to name this one hour. Hours. And this will add a one. Okay, and now that we have the hours, we also need a reset for our minutes. So copy your minutes and put it next to your second. And now we're going to also copy the greater than an if chip again. Let's actually move these over a bit so they don't get too much in the way. Okay, now we're going to take our minutes and put it into greater than. And if our minutes is greater than one, we're going to have it so the hour goes up by one and it resets the minute we're not going to have it reset the seconds in a minute because if we do that it's going to mess up and keep resetting everything and keep bugging out so if the seconds get up to 10 then it's going to add a minute and reset the seconds but if it goes up to one minute it's going to add an hour and reset the minutes because the minutes reset the seconds we're going to get our hour and put it to the string since the hour is the first one we'll have hour minute and then second and how we're going to connect this chip is we're going to have it connect to the minutes so disconnect this so every time this ticks it checks if the seconds is greater than 10 then it will go over to the minutes and then this will tick one then it checks if the minutes are greater than one and if they are it goes to an hour and resets the minutes But if it's not, then it resets the seconds. So now if I do this, seconds will go up to 10. Then it will add a minute. And then since this is great, well, it's not greater than a minute yet. It will be greater than a minute. Yeah, and you see that? It's, since it's greater than a minute, 
it adds an hour. And our minutes aren't going up because I have this set to one right now. But if I set this to 59, our minutes would keep going up till 59. Then it will add an hour. And there you go. You got your timer. Yeah, a CV1 timer, which is pretty simple. It's pretty quick, so I'll just show you right now. You want a scoreboard setup chip. You want a timer chip. Pretty sure I had other chips, too. I probably grabbed them from, the, yeah, here they are. You want a combinator chip. You want a game state chip. And you want a set game state chip. And all you need to do is turn on the scoreboard chip. If you have multiple of these in a room active at once, your scoreboard's probably going to mess up. So it's probably best not to have multiple setups like these in the room. So once you set it to one, you want to connect the time remaining to the time, not the duration. Then once the timer expires, it will end the game. Now the time, if it is, um, I'm going to go for 10 minutes, which is 600 seconds. But as you can see, 600 translates to 60 with CV1. So if you're using CV1, you're going to need to add an extra zero to a lot of things. And then it's 600, which is 10 seconds. I mean, 10 minutes. And now that we've done that, when we start the game, the combinator chip will add one to activate this. Let's put this in uh, countdown mode too. And then once the timer hits zero, it will end the game and it will reset all of this. So that will be your timer. Also, make sure you go in your game rules chip, which is right where you put it, and find player HUD in it and turn on player HUD. Because if player HUD isn't turned on, then they're not going to be able to see the timer itself counting down at the top of the screen. Also, just to show you that it works, I will change the time down to 10 seconds. And I will start the game real quick. Game on. And as you can see at the top of the screen, it says 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. And it will over. end the game once it hits zero. Okay, so if you enjoyed this tutorial, like, comment, subscribe. If any of you have any questions or if any of you need any help with any setups you have, I will help you in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video.